guest of honor today. Uh, it's not every day that we have a cabinet minister presiding over the functions of MSMEs. And it is even rarer that the defense minister, another first time in the history of India, has chosen to be the chief guest on the MSMEs platform. A big round. That shows the character and determination of the current chief defense minister we have in Honorable Shri Parikar. Uh, now may I welcome, uh, may I request uh, President Fisme to welcome our chief guest by presenting the flower bouquet, please. Sunila, could you please help? Sir. This side. May I also request uh, the MD, uh, Mr. Jain, of Ms. SP Publications to kindly welcome our guest of honor by presenting the flower bouquet. Without further ado, because uh, the, the minister is too hard pressed for the time, so I would request uh, the president of Federation of Indian Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises, Dr. Sangam Kurade, to come and deliver his welcome address, please. Dr. Kurade. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning to all of you. And thank you for coming in such large numbers. And uh, let me start my speech. Honorable Rakshamantraji, Sri Manohar Bab Parikar, Honorable Member Niti Ayog, Dr. Saraswat, Sri Jayan Baranwal, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a huge honor for me to welcome all of you this morning on behalf of not only FISME, but also the entire MSME community in India. For, in our institutional memory, it is for the first time that India's Raksha Mantri has honored the date with actual MSMEs. Coming from Goa, and watching Sri Manohar Parikar work from close quarters as my MLA, as Goa's leader of opposition, as well as a chief minister of state many times. I know very few people in the public life who can match his simple living and intellectual prowess. His focus and determination with a very candid approach and if, if required, an out of the box thinking sets him apart. He has always worked with extremely high standards of work ethics. While we in Goa miss him dearly, our country has definitely gained. We are grateful for his responding to our call to be with us. It is also an honor to welcome Dr. Saraswat, and I'm grateful, thankful for him for being the guest of honor in defense circles and large number of people in Delhi who are in know of strategic issues. Dr. Saraswat is nothing short of a hero. Now for all of you he gathered here and for the honorable uh, chief guest, let me say a few words about us, the FISME. Federation of Indian Micro and Small and Medium Enterprises, that is FISME, was born in, actually in 1967. So in a very few, few couple of years, we should be turning 50 actually. With the liberalization and in the mid 90s, 
1995 specifically, we were reorganized and christened at SwissMe. Today, we have a network of over 700 MSME associations, sir, spread over states across all industrial sectors. We also have offices in Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Chennai. Our mission is to work for the survival and growth of MSMEs. We basically work in three, th three thematic areas. Firstly, the market access for MSMEs. The secondly, the research-based advocacy for reforms to improve the business environment for MSMEs. And thirdly, the planning and execution of MSMEs development projects in partnership with Government of India and different international agencies which we have worked with over time, World Bank, UNTAD, UNIDO, GIZ, Commonwealth, etc. You name it, we have worked with them in the past. Now, our initiative for exploring opportunities for MSMEs in the defense sector is part of the larger market access, access theme. Since ages, MSMEs have been supplying to the armed forces, sir, in large number of areas such as goods and services against revenue procurements from food, clothing, parts, and spares. FISME took a lot of steps initially also to push MSME's participation in capital procurement done by defense establishment in, in the weapons and weapon systems also. We had conceived and organized in, nine, in 2011, sir, one huge program on defense plus contract in Hyderabad. It was the expo to foster linkages between OEMs and Tire 1 and Tire 2 suppliers. This was done in active support of Ministry of Defense and MSMEs. It was inaugurated then, at that time, the Minister of Defense, Sri Pallam Raju. There is little doubt, sir, that under Prime Minister Modi's and your leadership, there is a renewed focus in the central government on make in India and building indigenous capabilities in defense production through a slew of policy interventions being planned, including offsets. We at FISMI, sir, should and b should be very much like to be a part of this uh, process. It's not that it's, uh, we, we would like to be of a demand. It's something which is a need of the hour and is required for nation building. Last month in May, sir, we organized a brainstorming session with a, f a few India's top OEMs, including Boeing, BAE Systems, Israel or Aerospace, IDSA, etc. And based on the deliberations, FISMI has, along with a talented pool of professionals, con coal advisory, we have attempted a consultation paper, which is part of this profile. It's been presented in your uh, kit. It says challenges of Indian MSME's participation on defense sector. This will be deliberated and discussed later on. So, without my much further ado, there are a couple of issues which I'd like to look for you to look at and de uh, demand your attention, sir. For the paucity of time, please allow me to flag just a few of them. Firstly, sir, you are acutely aware of the reasons why the critical guidelines of defense procurement policy on buy Indian, buy and make Indian, make Indian, buy and make with a transfer technology, these things have not yielded desired results. So we need guidelines which are simple and easily implementable. This is one of our first requests, sir. Secondly, our specific request, and most importantly, which can take us forward from after this seminar, because finally, we, seminars and talks are fine, but we need to take this thing momentum forward for, for the nation building. So kindly consider our request for establishing an MSME interface in your defense establishment. It is done in the US on the lines of US Department of Defense, Office of Small Businesses. It is also done in Singapore. It is also done in Israel, so I'm given to understand. Now this, in effect, provides a host of support services such as procurement forecast, procurement technical assistance with subcontracting plans, liaison between private sector, small businesses, and provides a mechanism for backward integration. It's just, it helps your ministry as well as the MSME, sir. 
This is, that was the second point. The third, let me address lot, to a lot of skeptics who may be there in the audience, across the board, across India, that the role of MSME capabilities. There is always, when the discussion of defense pro production and procurement does happen, an arg our argument is ensued, sir, that there are not enough capable MSME defense suppliers. So this, sir, is an erroneous assertion. The fact of the matter is, it is MSMEs who are technically capable, but they don't know how to reach you, nor is there a mechanism for you to reach out to them. A lot of ways, sir, the ministry is like a Berlin Wall. This needs to be broken, and we should have a free interface where uh, uh, the, the nation is, is help, sir. I'll give you an example uh, straight on forward, sir. And for all the members of the audience, you people may should be remembering 25 years back, or 30 years back, rather, when Maruti tied up with Suzuki. In the automotive sector, of course, there was a large company coming forward and setting up shop here. What if such a, certain, such, such a thing happens in the defense establishment? It would revolutionize, not just now the Maruti Suzuki tie up, revolutionize not just the automotive sector, but engineering aspects across the board, across India. I, I, I think, honestly, sir, except for you traveling in the ambassador, I've, we, we find very few people traveling in ambassadors today because the kind of cars and the kind of uh, uh, products which you see coming off from automotive sector is really astounding. I think similar thing can happen in India through defense also. Also, at the same time, I'd like to point out that SMEs also should, should be able to scale up through investments and through skill and innovation. And finally, sir, I'd like to point out that we spend billions of dollars in defense R&D, but much of our output, sometimes excellent, excellent technologies, remains locked in silos of defense establishment. Effort to get access to them for commercializing these technologies have been nothing less than frustrating for the MSMEs. In many other countries, MSMEs are given the first take on defense R&D-led technology spin-off. Some of the examples which come off across to my mind is like the Velcro, what we were standard. I mean, this was in a World War uh, one, War II scenario where Velcro, when man went to the moon, the Velcro came in the picture. The simple stick-on, which you use for uh, your stationery, that's also a defense uh, uh, innovation long time back. So having said this, I hope, sir, and to all the uh, members of the audience, that today's deliberation and findings uh, will help us prepare a policy paper which will be considered by the policymakers, sir, and FISMI services will be fully utilized on requisite platforms. I once again thank the Honorable Raksha Mantri for sparing his time from his busy schedule to be among MSMEs in the country, and Dr. Saraswat for his august presence. Look forward to all of your views for the upliftment of MSMEs. Dhanyavad and Jai Hind. Thank you, Dr. Kurade. Uh, you mentioned two very important points. One, uh, that how, for example, we need uh, an MSME interface on the lines of US Department of Defense Office of Small Business. And second, how uh, some efforts are needed to unlock the technologies that lie in defense establishments and how MSMEs can have the fastest take on them. Uh, a big round of applause, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for uh, uh, FISME President for having made his presentation. <laughs> Moving on, I have an honor of introducing you a very illustrious person today, Dr. Vijay Kumar Saraswat. Uh, Dr. Vijay Kumar Saraswat, India's most gifted scientist and accomplished researcher. He is a rare combination of innovation, technologies, and he's a visionary. Dr. Saraswat completed his engineering. I think <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you, thank you. I, uh, I, a big round of applause thank for you, Dr. Saraswat. Good morning. Honorable Raksha Mantri Shri Parikar Ji, Shri Sangam Kurade Ji, Amit Bharadwa Ji, Jayant Baranwal Ji, all the distinguished participants to this particular conference today. I see many, many known faces, 
because my life of 40 years in defense R&D has been with a large number of uh, MSMEs. In fact, uh, if I start narrating you the stories from 1972, when I started my career, till I retired in 2013, I think it must have been more than at least 150 to 200 MSMEs with whom I would have worked for different challenges which I faced in my career for realizing systems in R&D. Recently, I was just going through a very important document when we are preparing Niti Aayog because statistics is what I am learning now. I never used to learn statistics about uh, economics and growth of industry and so on. But today if I see the first and the foremost sentence which I saw on that document was that the MSMEs have emerged as the most vibrant and dynamic sector of the Indian economy. This was the starting sentence in the document. It was a study made by one of the, one of the consulting groups in this country. And it quoted that uh, it contributes nearly 8% of the country's GDP. Out of the 17% which the overall manufacturing contributes, it is about 8% what the GDP you, you gentlemen are contributing. And it's about 45% of the manufacturing output. Great. 40% of exports, 30 million employment. That is the next highest employment which MSMEs provide after agriculture. I don't know how many of you are aware of these statistics, but it's very, very heartening. Because my experience of, of uh, MSMEs is something what I have seen them growing from 1970s. I can recall one story when I wanted to get one of my compressors, which one of my predecessors in 1972 imported from Belgium. It was lying in grass. Nobody had used it, so it was completely rusted and corroded. My boss told me to start, uh, start it somehow. And I, when I opened it, the cylinder, the piston, everything was completely rusted and jammed. So my first task was to get that uh, cylinder reboard or get something. Then I found there was some, because of the corrosion, cracks are there. So I went around in Hyderabad and found there was nobody who could give me a casting for that lineup. So I went, somebody told me, go to Charminar. In Charminar, there is a guy called Fakruddin, he will be able to do it. I went there, there was a small hut kind of a thing where there is a small furnace and he is casting. So I told him, can you do it in Mahanite casting? He said, if you want casting, I've got this cast iron, I will do it. He did that and I said, machining? You go to Trup Bajar, there is a lathe there, there you can get the machining or boring, whatever you want. So after seven days, that fellow gave me some peace. That was a skill of MSME at that point in time. From there on, from 82s, we have seen the growth of MSMEs as uh, the Indian defense R&D particularly, space R&D, the atomic energy R&D grew up. It is the R&D centers of this country which have really harnessed the capabilities of MSMEs in a big way. Right from 1982 till today, I can tell you there are more than about 400 industries which are largely MSMEs, of course some of them may be medium class, who have grown today from uh, just component manufacturers to subsystem designers, subsystem developers, and even today, participating in a major programs of uh, Indian defense. Just one case I will narrate to you, one Akash project, whose orders are almost about 25, if I remember earlier when I was in DRDO, it was about 25,000 crores. Now I am told it is growing to about 40,000 crores. 65% of this production is coming from the private sector and largely from MSMEs. So that itself shows how the MSME sector in this country had grown, which is directly corroborated by the data, which is, which is just now uh, I was quoting for, for you. Now, this kind of a growth has certainly taken the country as the industry has grown from purely component manufacturer to today participating in the India's R&D programs and uh, then evolving themselves into uh, subsystem designers, a lot of innovation has come. I'll give an example. When we were trying to make a, make a nose cone for a missile, we were uh, only drop stamping, which HAL used to do in a very costly manner. 
we, we asked one of the MSMEs, can you make a stretch forming? And the, the, the MSME built a machine for stretch forming, first time in this country, and built an ojive nose cone, which used to be one of the costliest items coming from HL, with a very, very costly process. And that has become the order of the day today. So there are a lot of innovation in doing new processes which have happened. Doing servo walls, doing hydraulic actuators, making electronic systems for, for the missiles and the aircrafts, embedded computers, hydraulic systems for raising warheads up and down. I think there's a gentleman sitting here who participated in the program like that. There are many of you who have done wonderful work for them. Friends, the the the, the the growth has taken place. You have learned how to do very, very complex technological things in this particular area. But now, if you look at what are the opportunities waiting for you, Indian defense programs are growing, growing, and growing. Today, you have almost about 150 to 200 billion dollars of opportunity as far as defense is concerned. You have missiles, you have aircraft, you have got tanks, you have guns, you have got UAVs, you have got large number of subsystems and systems which are under indigenous R&D, and some of them are being procured directly, which also gives you opportunity to participate in a big way. If you have to see that, you, ha you have to participate in that, you have to realize that defense is not a conventional business. This is one business where you have complex designs, you have low volume of production, you have specific materials, you have many processes which are very, very unique, and those all have to be made available if you have to make use of these opportunities. And from where these processes will come, you will learn it through interaction with the various research and development organizations in this country, as well as from the academic institutions. We have to upgrade our infrastructure in terms of modern methods of manufacturing in MSMEs also, if you want to make use of these particular opportunities which are coming. Quality control, certification, and also stringent regulatory mechanisms which control the supply of these items to our armed forces have to be all part of your learning exercise. If you don't do that, the ecosystem which has generated now with large number of industries of tier one type, tier two type, already uh, harnessing the availability of the offsets and so on, the major opportunity is 30% offset of this $150 million market. Makes how much? Can you imagine? And even if you become as a tier two or a three, tier three supplier in that, you have great opportunity. But for that, upgradation of your manufacturing processes, your quality culture, your investment in some of these areas will have to be done in a big way. If you are able to do that, then all these uh, DPP processes, which I'm sure our Honorable Rakshamantri has already taken a decision to simplify all of them so that the process of uh, getting into that becomes easier, will be a boon for all of us to make our MSMEs a great sector. I can only say that after 150 billion, if the offsets about 30% comes, you still have about 10 to 20 billion dollars of uh, business which is awaiting. What should we do for that? We should start now working more and more towards the new processes which are emerging. And if countries' uh, direction in expanding the defense business be becomes larger, then if we have clusters, maybe clusters for electronics, maybe clusters for armament, maybe clusters for hydraulics and pneumatics and sensors, maybe clusters for naval systems, maybe clusters for electronic manufacturing for different segments, they all will become part of your, your domain because you will be the main bedrock for doing the production of the components and subsystems and feeding into the system laboratories. And I'm sure many of you, as you will grow, will be in a position to become sometimes for the small subsystems like UAVs and things like that, the lead integrator also. The need of the hour is to bring in more and more innovation, R&D in your system. If you are able to do that, the government policies today will be very, very beneficial in upgrading your, your infrastructure. 10,000 crore special fund has been announced by the government for MSMEs. If we can make use of that and the policy of subsidies which is going to come as far as the MSMEs are concerned, it's going to be a great, a great boon as far as this sector is concerned. Working with R&D, working with the defense PSUs, working with ordnance factories, 
taking the, all the uh, tier two and tier three kind of activities with the new processes should be the mantra as far as the growth of MSMEs is concerned. Innovation and design capability growth with new processes should be your next step in this direction. Opportunities are many friends. We are here, we have been with you all the time and I'm sure we can take this sector as from 8%, probably 17% tomorrow as far as the aerospace and defense is concerned. I think our Honorable Raksha Mantri has already announced that many modifications in the procurement process that will be all beneficial for MSME and I'm sure this will happen. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to, to interact with you and wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Dr. Saraswat, for your inspiring uh, speech and also reposing faith in the capabilities of the MSMEs, especially coming from a person from India's top scientist who has worked on a uh, range of India's uh, top arsenal of prithvis and, and so on. Uh, Padm Bhushan, Dr. Saraswat, a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Now I have the great honor of introducing uh, Shri Manohar Parikar, Honorable Lakshamanti, to you, uh, an alumni of uh, Indian Institute of Technology, 1978 batch. He has broken various, various new grounds, whether it is uh, in the politics of Goa or whether it is uh, as Chief Minister of Goa, and now he has started bringing those grounds that we see every day today as Defense Minister of the country. We may be comprising of small and medium enterprises here, of small businesses, but let's show, ladies and gentlemen, that our businesses may be small, but our hearts are large. A thunderous applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our defense minister. Thank you. Dr. Saraswat, Sangam Kurade, Bhardwaj, and ban rest of you let me first thank uh, the forum for giving me this opportunity to speak uh, on opportunities for msme as in defense sector let me be brief because uh, dr saraswat has already uh, put up many things and uh, one factor which uh, I think I learned at IIT besides technology was humor, which I have decided that I will not use it in public forum. Many times those who don't understand it take it in a wrong way. So I'll stick to the basic uh, issue and that is uh, opportunity to micro, small and medium or tiny, small and medium uh, industries. I, 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 before becoming defense minister, I can tell you that I am part of you only. Being a technocrat myself and having started a small scale unit in Goa before getting pushed into this very wild world of, world of politics. Uh, I was in an area which was less wild, that is uh, manufacturing. Because in manufacturing, you can predict what happens. Here, you can't. <laughs> when I sit there, I note that uh, there's a continuous photography being taken. So we have to be alert every 10 seconds. <laughs> the tech, this is technology, actually. Uh, when I came in politics, a photographer had to think 10 times before taking a photograph. Because he had to develop it on a film. The film was costing, the time consuming. So now he just presses the shutter and allows the technology to do the rest. So he gets a ph photograph every one or two seconds and then selects the best or the worst, <laughs> depending on where it has to be used. See, uh, the IIT days don't go, go away that very easily. But I'm, I agree with Sangam that uh, it is actually the MSMEs, small sector, which is a real power center for innovation and 
finding out new ways and therefore the make in india and let me differentiate between make in india project and make project the make project is selection of a project selection of a identified sub assemblies final product or component which needs to be developed in india as an import substitute so you list out product from various imported items and then uh, decide that okay i'm going to develop this product to a reasonable indigenous standard or indigenization and i i'm going to make this in india for which government is ready to support you i think we should have some patience and as i earlier said uh, the kind of complexities which has developed over last uh, decade in defense procurement needs to be simplified it's very easy to design something with fresh but to modify old setup pattern which has created difficulties it's more difficult and we are on the job we understand all these aspects we also understand that msme cannot have an withholding power which a big industrial house may have obviously it develops a product and if the developed product does not result into fruitful order uh, either he is uh, totally disappointed and goes away from the development field of it or collapses i was having a talk with one retired bank employee who was part of this uh, restructuring and non performing asset and a very uh, important thing which he brought to my notice was that substantial quantum of non performing assets were results of actually commercial non performance and not technical non performance from the msme side so they had performed well but they could not manage a commercial contract particularly if it is dealing with government or government related agencies and government related agencies includes even a private government sector defense psus for example or psus which almost believe behaves like an government arm instead of taking advantage of the flexibility permitted under the companies act they tend to look back towards the defense department of course they can't be blamed for it i think all this needs to be changed and a change requires change in mindset it is very important how much you did what you did how much was successful is decided over a period of time you can't make a success and overnight i can't say that i am going to have a 30% or 20% these are just assume figures certain percentage of input from small and medium and micro but if the thinking pattern changes lot of things change you are seeing it for last 2 3 days a simple action against insurgents has changed the mindset of the full security scenario in the country i am not uh, i am not going into the detail of the event which has been briefed by military operations obviously because it is security sensitive but i am going into the aspect of it creating a different mindset so much so that those who fear india's new posture have started reacting and therefore it is what mindset requires change which can actually result into ultimate uh, success in any of the, any field any field you choose your own personal life also if you change the mindset you will realize that suddenly a lot of problem vanishes 
do it at home practice it at home and change it from your side don't wait others members of the family to change it for you change it from your side start taking every family challenge in a serious but well organized issue and you will find your mindset itself solves the half the problem i think the change in mindset in government due to modi ji's clarion call for make in india it doesn't become lot of people ask me how much fdi <coughs> has flown in india because of make in india or increasing of fdi is not uh, fdi increase 26 to 49 which immediately is going to result into huge massive investment but it is a very important door to be kept open for a investment to flow in if you don't open this door and do everything internally the external door of fdi cap will block the entry so you have to open one door you have to open another door and most important you have to do open the door of the mindset what is very important is change the overall mindset on security of the nation and very important aspect of change in mindset of security of the nation is self reliance you cannot afford to be dependent on someone else for your weaponry or your armament logic is very simple we are maintaining all this structure defense structure at a huge cost anyone any which whichever country obviously for eventuality and not for day to day use so when you or oh, go for a eventuality you need to dip, uh, be more reliant on your own sources and not on imports because there are various reasons imports can get in to get into a jam or stuck up and that is one of the reason the mindset of defense procurement has to change my job is to change the mindset the regulatory mechanisms will come in due course we are on a fast track that much i can promise you but even the fast track uh, requires some time the time frame can be squeezed but cannot be eliminated and therefore i request you to hold for some uh, as far as r&d is concerned the ipp technology technology transfer all aspects have been already addressed and is a interaction or a platform for small industry will be created moment dpp is in uh, force at this moment as far as the procurement is concerned the many issues in defense we are focusing on the fresh dpp which make make in india all concept well clarified which i think would sh should come in a reasonable time and uh, when i say reasonable time i don't give i have not given any deadline simply because deadlines are for me and not for the public thank you very much change of mindset that's what uh, i think uh, uh, summarizes the most important part of the address of the honorable minister and the change of mindset is not just confined uh, to uh, the specific dpp but the overall security structure of the country and that uh, the results of which we have started seeing in, in the recent past uh, a big round of applause ladies and gentlemen for our defense minister CMD of uh, uh, the public SP publications to come over and propose the vote of thanks, please. Honorable uh, Defence Minister Shri Manohar Parikar ji, Dr. V K Saraswat, my colleagues from uh, FISMI.
Anil ji and Sangam ji and friends. It's a delight to be part of a, an initiative by FISME which calls for support and collaborative opportunities for medium and small enterprises. Our country is full of uh, talents and resources and the SME, MSMEs are the true examples of the same. Honorable uh, Panikaji, if uh, we are allowed to speak our heart, I would like to humbly mention that we at SPs founded in 1964 by our founder CSP Baranwal are not passionate about our publications but are immensely passionate about our country, our motherland. And that's the only reason why uh, not only we have almost 10 publications uh, with about 10 issues a year, but we work very minutely with all, all the quality aspects of these publications. Make in India, a great initiative introduced by our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Modidi is rather a destination. If we all work together with support of our government and industry ministries, we can make it towards make India better. A group of ants can work if together as stronger as the dinosaur against an elephant, if I may say so. Also, with Make in India duly in place, I believe we shall be aiming for much stronger globalization of our country. Our sincere thanks to Honorable Minister for his time. He so kindly spared for our efforts on MSMEs. We do look forward to your kind support and blessings for all of us. We convey sincere appreciation to FISPI for their efforts and we look forward to our growing partnership. We thank and lead our partners KNN and Koan. Jai Hind. Thank you, Mr. Dhanwal. Now, may I kindly request uh, our uh, colleagues, uh, Mr. Manohar Gain, Vice President, Manisar Industry Association, Mr. Ramesh Chandra, President of Narana Industries Association, if they could kindly come straight forward and kindly uh, be a little fast and uh, give away the mementos from this man to the Honorable Chief Guest. Mr. Gant, to the Honorable Defence Minister. Sir Ramesh Chandra, to Dr. Saraswat. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. A big round of applause for our guests. Kindly stay on when the guests uh, depart. Uh, we'll have a 10 minutes break after that and then we'll resume for the second session. Thanks. Appreciation, just, just appreciation, sir. Congratulations on the manner of friendship. Mindset, sir. Mindset. How can the MSMEs associate themselves with the Make in India in defense sector? Defense sector is giving lots of opportunities today for the participation of MSMEs. Already the growth of MSME is due to the three major sectors in this country. Defense, aerospace and space and atomic energy. Because of these three, four sectors, the, per, the, the, the contribution of MSME has increased considerably. Today, MSME is not just the component manufacturer. They are even making subsystems like actuators, computers, many of the devices. So growth is there already. Now, opportunity in the defense sector is so much, 
that you have almost 150 billion dollars of indigenous production which is emerging all in the sectors of aircraft tanks guns un unmanned systems and all that participation of msme could be through the participation with r and d institutions and directly making use of the offsets which are being provided under the make in india program so in that 30% offset amounts to about 20 billion dollars now that's the opportunity for this the msmes will have to upgrade themselves in terms of their business processes design capability certain infrastructure which is required for the modern day manufacturing for the aerospace the complexity of aerospace systems is unique it is technologically complex it it has got small volume but it's a high cost item so it's a turnover wise it is giving that quality. msmes if they work with academic institutions and r and d institutions and defense psus and ordnance factories as tier 2 and tier 3 companies the growth will automatically happen and their participation in the defense production will be enormous already it is more than 8% they are giving to the gdp I'm sure this is an opportunity for taking this 8% to something like 15%. So, but technology is a major hindrance for the MSMEs. So, will there be any hand-holding for, for them? Yes. That's why I've suggested wherever technology gaps are there, work with R&D institutions because they will transfer the technology to the MSMEs. And this has happened in the past. Many MSMEs have benefited from the technologies which got developed in the three strategic departments of our country. And sir, also uh, like 50% uh, additional weightage has been given to MSMEs in the defense yes, offset. Yes, so yes. what do you think is the reason like why is it still lagging behind in procurement from the MSMEs? In the no, it is not that it's lagging behind. It is just that the, 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 the projection which has been made in terms of what is the level for which it is applicable is not gone down well with the, um, with the, with the foreign companies. Because the moment they look at that only those companies which has got a capex only this much, they are entitled for 1.5. But the matching technology capability is not found in these companies. So as a result, they are not able to capture this particular market. But possibilities are there if they work with R&D even in this sector. So what are the big announcements that are expected in the defense procurement policy? I think our Honorable Raksha Mantri has already mentioned that it is going to be a simpler system of carrying, carrying out business. Nothing other than that, because it is still evolving. I'm sure things will be looking up in, in due course. But simplicity of operation yeah. is the buzzword. So do you think this seminar from organized by FISME will be helpful in uh, uh, bringing more opportunities to the doors of MSN? Absolutely. I think this kind of a seminar, this kind of interaction brings in synergy among the industries, synergy with the government, synergy with the policy makers and also gives an opportunity to appreciate each other's problem. And uh, that is the best platform for improvement. So what role can the industry association play in uh, bringing the opportunities or uh, in... Uh, uh, making the MSMEs keep uh, upgrading the technologies of the Just five minutes, uh, there were two minutes back, I was talking to a large number of the participants today. I find there is a lack of information, knowledge about what is the emerging market. The association should create a portal by which they should be able to consolidate the emerging markets in the defense sector through various agencies like the research agencies, public sector agencies and all that. And then be a feeder to the individual SM, uh, MSMEs based upon their capability as to identifying what market they can capture. This will be a great service. Gaps required for, suppose you, you need some capability in a particular industry and that doesn't have. These associations can create a holding company where centralized facilities, for, for example, qualification testing, NDT testing, heat treatment facilities, associations can create a holding company and under this holding company these services can be provided on so that the repetitive investment in each SME or MSME would not be required. Like that many things can be done by this association for improving the lot of MSMEs. So one last question. The uh, foreign contractors are asking to include the cost of technology provided to the MSME suppliers in the defense offset. Do you agree with that? No. See, when a contract is made when a contract is made, technology transfer or technology supplier supplying is also part of this offset. So there is no question of paying separately for the technology transfer and things like that. Unless 
the offset is coming in terms of technology transfer. But if offset is coming in terms of manufacturing that component, there is no payment to be made by any industry to the offset provider for the technology uh, inputs. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.